it's it's fun to see how it's really reinforcing that notion that we have to know what our center is or and and to keep to keep reinforcing and rediscovering like we've been doing with our little shared book club mm -hmm. of reading more modern books and saying okay how do they match with our core touchstone principles and and the literature that kind of has grounded us what do we take what do we that allows us to build this this media literacy skill mm -hmm. to keep trying on different voices and for me anyway it helps me feel like the language of my touchstone expands and i feel like i'm able to understand other people and perhaps how they might talk about their values and their center even if they're religious perspective or even philosophical you know we can we can find ways to communicate with others if we each are centered if we each know where where our grounding is thoughts on that you're tapping into something non-unique right yes. you're tapping into something that exists in humanity at large again evidenced by the consistent literature and the consistent stories that even if it's not the same religion or the same culture right the Tao Te Ching is talking about almost the exact same principles as the Bhagavad Gita, which is talking about almost the exact as the Bible, right? It's there, when you get down to the fundamental principles, the ideas of how to act as a right human being in right relationship, nigh and identical. There's different cultural examples, they apply it in different ways, but the base, you can say like the base code. Yeah. I, I spent a lot of time doing data analysis and programming, the base code for all these is the exact same. And from that, you have a C++ and you have a SAS and you have an R and you have mm, a Python. I like that metaphor. And they're used for different things. And I think that's something really important to recognize with the idea of diversity, that as you're ingesting all these different, I, I use that, that verbiage de deliberately, right? Where you're ingesting, you're drinking from the, the Pyrenean Spring is the, is the classic. Do not drink, drink, uh, drink lightly. I don't know what the translation is, but do not do not drink quietly from that period in spring. The idea being, if you just if you're just sampling the ideas that have come from the result of all this background, you're missing out on the conversation. You are you're hearing the the gossip essentially of deeper and deeper and deeper principles that you can track back not only through history but also within yourself. That as you're taking the steps back into history and you're following the the classical ladder all the way back to its beginnings you're really like to your point of being centered with yourself you're tracking back farther and farther into your own understanding of of humanity and of reality once you've done that then you can really start to make effective steps forward what i find so often is i'll be talking about some hot button topic politically and I'll say something that is certainly not intended as offensive. It's like, well, well what do you think about this? Like, what do you think about this principle that kind of contradicts what you're saying? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And the immediate reaction is, whoa, like, how dare you, right? Because I'm, I'm treading on sacred ground. I'm interrupting something that's very personal and very emotional to them. But is it? Is it really? Because what I'm really treading on is something that they've based their entire being on. Is there using this gossip, this opinion that they're spouting from someone else. And I mean, no one wants to look the fool, right? And so it, they'll, they'll defend it. They'll defend it with everything they have. They're like, no, 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 but this has to be correct. But according to these true principles that I found from taking the steps back, is it? Not even necessarily it is or isn't. We all have to ask that too, because we all we have, have our, that. we all have our, our blind spots and our hot buttons. And mm -hmm. I guess what I'm, what I'm really trying to get at is, I find that if you really do believe in what you're saying, you have to justify less. I, I, one of my personal rules in this touchstone sphere is if I have to justify it, I'm already wrong. Not explain it. There's, there's a difference, right? Where I'll explain my business like, no, here, this is what I'm thinking and here's why. I'm open to other alternatives, to other opinions, but justify meaning I will live and die on this, on this thing, whatever it is. Cause usually it's, it's never a principle, right? It's never a principle that you're putting out here. They're like, I must believe in this thing. Right. More often than not, it's, it's a policy uh, or a position. Or a, yeah. Exactly. Right. It's something that is in a lot of ways superfluous, 
It's a branch. It's a branch. It's not the root. And when I have to justify one of those, okay, something's not right within myself. Again, coming back here to my personal center, I'm not feeling good about whatever it is I'm defending. Again, this is kind of going to more like the practical application, right? I have to draw back and say, okay, where am I actually on this topic and why? And more often than not, I'll come out of it and say, you know what? I know why I wasn't feeling great about this and why I was feeling so attacked is because I didn't actually believe in what I was saying in the first place. Based on true principles, things that I found to be true, I'm going to take a couple steps and arrive back at this principle. I think this is something that I can get more behind. What do you think about this? And I always find that's a more productive conversation. And if I can engage other people in that, even in the middle of the conversation, just by asking questions, just by listening. And I said, yeah, why do you think that? Like, where does that, where do you think that comes from? And they'll say, well, you know, I was raised this way in this sort of a community. And so this is probably why I have this opinion. Like, okay, yeah, why do you think that became important to you? Like, why did you take that in? Well, that's a good question. Then we'll be able to have a much more productive conversation that we're almost, you know, two people talking about this one policy. We're almost like retracting back into our own process, right? And then returning back. That's the kind of civic engagement I can get my... Yeah. My head around, yeah. And you can engage that without doing necessarily the legwork to go back and read all the classical literature and figure out what your actual touchstone is and do all the comparative research. You can do that just in conversation, just by listening. But again, that is a true principle. That is something that the classics teach. 